Hello, in this video I'm going to take you through the required steps to set up your computer so that you can begin developing Android applications. Now, there really are two different steps that you'll need to perform. The first is to install the Java Development Kit on your computer. The second step is to install the Android Developer Tools Bundle, also known as the ADT Bundle. After those two steps are completed, you can begin developing your own applications on your Windows computer. Now this is a default installation of Windows 7. With one exception, I have Google Chrome installed for my browser. The links to the websites that I will be going to are in the lesson text. and You can find those and click on those links and that will take you to the exact same pages that I will be on for this video. So let's go ahead and begin. The first page that I want to go ahead and download from is from the Oracle web page and I'm going to download the Java Development Kit. I'm going to go ahead and scroll down and I will find on the web page for Oracle the Java Development Kit download, JDK download. I'm going to go ahead and click on download and I will need to accept the license agreement before I can continue. And if I scroll down just a little bit, you'll see here's the accept license agreement. I'm going to go ahead and click on that and after I do that, I can then now choose the appropriate download for my operating system. If you're not familiar with what operating system version you have as far as whether it's a 32-bit or a 64-bit operating system, you can usually tell by clicking Start, right-clicking on the computer, and going to Properties. And you should be able to determine what you have. If it is a 64-bit operating system, you usually will see 64-bit operating system somewhere in the Properties. You may see 32-bit, or if you do not see anything, if it's an older computer such as a Windows XP computer, and you do not see the 64-bit number there, it may be 32-bit. So I'm currently running a 64-bit operating system. So I will go ahead and close that. And I need to download the x64 option. x86 is for the 32-bit computers. So I'm going to go ahead and download the Java Development Kit. The current version I'm downloading is version 7, update 51. I'll go ahead and click on that. Now it will take a moment to download. You'll see that currently it's 125, a little over 125 megabytes. And so now after it has downloaded, I can go ahead and usually click it right from the browser to run it. Or if you try to come back later on and want to run the application, you should be able to find it in your downloads folder. So there it is, the Java Development Kit. I'll go ahead and double click that. I'm going to begin running the application. I need to have administrative rights to install this, and so I will be prompted for that. So I'll go ahead and choose yes. And now throughout this process, I will be accepting the default installation. So I'm going to go ahead and choose next. I'm going to choose next again. And now I'm being prompted to ask where I want to install the application. Again, I'm going to go ahead and choose the default option and just use Next. And now you can see that Java has successfully installed on my computer. I'm going to go ahead and choose Close. And that's the first step that I needed to do. The second step that I needed to do is to install the Android Developer Tools Bundle, or the ADT Bundle. And there's a link again on the lesson text in order to provide you to this link, the developer.android.com forward slash SDK forward slash index.html. We can go ahead and download it straight from Google's website or the android.com website. And there's the link for it. Download the SDK ADT bundle for Windows. I'll go ahead and click on that. And again, I need to choose whether or not I'm using a 32-bit or 64-bit operating system. I currently use 64-bit and you must agree to the license terms. I'll go ahead and click on that and then choose to download. And now after the file has downloaded, you, again you can choose to either run it from, actually we need to extract this file. So I'm going to go ahead and actually just close my browser as I no longer need it. And return back to the downloads folder. There we go. And so I can't actually run this particular file. It's a zipped up compressed archive. So what I'll need to do is right click on it and choose to extract it. And I'll go ahead and hit Extract. Now that the file is extracted, I'm almost done. Just one word of caution. Do not open the folder and run any of the applications, especially the Eclipse application, from the Downloads folder. And the reason for that is because when you do run this, it's going to create a hidden folder for you that actually is going to keep some of your configuration settings. And you don't want to move it and then have to try to find that hidden folder and move that as well. So before you actually run any of the applications in there, go ahead and move it to the location you want. Now I typically do not like to put things on my desktop, and you can see here, 
even though it's a default installation, there's nothing on my desktop. What I want to do is probably create some kind of location, either in my home folder for the user or somewhere else to put this so that I don't accidentally delete it. And it's easy enough for me to get to often so that I can keep running my Android application. So what I'll do is just go ahead and navigate over to, let's go ahead and go to computer, C drive, my users folder, that's me. And then go ahead and go to, um, actually just move it right here. So I'll go ahead and drag that folder over and just drop it in my username folder. Now if you do use Windows 7, I do not like the fact that your favorites does not contain your home folder. So what you can just do is right click on favorites and go ahead and choose add current location to favorites. Every time you open up the file explorer, you'll find there's your home folder right there. And then you can find the Android ADT bundle. And if I double click this, double click that, there's Eclipse. And let's go ahead and run Eclipse. I'm going to go ahead and choose run. And you can see already that Eclipse is currently running with the Android developer tools already installed. And I'm going to go ahead and choose OK for the workspace for right now. And I'll go ahead and just go ahead and hit choose finish. And it doesn't matter to me if Google gets my usage statistics. So I'll just go ahead and hit finish there. And we are now ready to begin developing our own applications.